problems, worries, sadness. Are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear. Welcome to Shalom World. I'm Father Julian Studden of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Calgary in Canada. And our theme for today is forgiveness. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of forgiveness. We ask you to open our hearts so that we may be free to forgive. It's only by your grace, Lord, that we can forgive. Help us to experience that forgiveness and help us to share abundantly that gift of forgiveness with others. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to begin this reflection with a gospel passage again from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to the end of the chapter. I'd like to read. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, Peter, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him his debt. But that very same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe me. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then the Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, the Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. And Jesus concluded and said, So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. We find it very difficult to say, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, after listening to this. Why? Because all of us have a problem with unforgiveness. Is it easy to forgive? No. But we all have a problem with unforgiveness. And we are carrying it for many years in our hearts. And whether we like it or not, consciously or unconsciously, this unforgiveness is guiding us in our outlook in life, in our relationships with others, and in our fulfillment in our own life. Here now is a beautiful invitation from Jesus to forgive. We are all like Peter. At the beginning of this beautiful passage, Peter came to Jesus and said, if somebody sins against me seven times, how many times must I forgive? Seven times? Jesus says, no, 77 times. I mean, don't take out your calculator and 
calculate now. That's not the point. Jesus is asking us that if we are his disciples, then you and I need to have a constant attitude of forgiveness. This is the hallmark of a Christian disciple, to have constant forgiveness. But is it easy to forgive? There are so many reasons why we don't forgive. Let me read a quote for you. This is what the quote says. The most miserable prison in the world is the prison we make of ourselves when we refuse to show mercy. Our thoughts become shackled. Our emotions are chained. The will is almost paralyzed. But when we show mercy, all of these bonds are broken and we enter into a joyful liberty that frees us to share God's love with others. What a beautiful quote. Am I living in the prison of my own heart? And sometimes we are carrying it for many, many years. Sometimes we think, oh, if I forgive, that is weakness. If I forgive, that is injustice. If I forgive, that person will have power over me. These may be true, these may not be true. But the point is, I want freedom of heart. I want to be free so that I can live my life and fulfill my life in Jesus. So in Jesus then, you and I are called to forgive. This is the hallmark of our following of Jesus, our discipleship in Jesus. And that is why we also pray in the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So I stand in need of God's forgiveness. When I go to God, I want Him to forgive me. But when I go to others, I find it very difficult to forgive. So here is where we need the grace and the strength of Christ. So there are three things about forgiveness. Number one, when the Lord asks you and me to forgive, He gives us the grace to forgive. So therefore, as a disciple of Jesus, you and I accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior who died on the cross for us to give us that redemption and hope of redemption. So when he asks me to forgive, he gives me tons and tons of his grace to forgive. The second thing about forgiveness is I realize in my own personal life and you to realize in your own personal life that the Lord has forgiven you and me my many sins, your many sins. When we go for confession, when we go for reconciliation to the priest, we say, Father, bless me for I have sinned. These are my sins. And we come with a long shopping list of sins. What do we expect? I expect that the Lord forgives me all those sins. And what are those sins? It's not just, you know, I was rude, I was unkind, I said bad words, I stole. No. It's every kind of sin under the sun. And you and I know what terrible sinners we are. Let's be honest. We are sinners. We are sinners. And the Lord has forgiven us that mountain of our sins. If the Lord has forgiven me the mountain of my personal sins, where do I stand in sharing that forgiveness with others? And that's the third part. We look at Jesus hanging on that cross. One of the last seven words of Christ on the cross was, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Jesus didn't die with hatred in his heart. 
Jesus didn't die with revenge in his heart. Jesus died forgiving. And he looked at his persecutors. He looked at his people who rejected him through the eyes of his father. And whom did he see there? He saw the children of his father, his own brothers and sisters. Can I acquire the eyes of Jesus to see those who have hurt me as the children of the Father, sons and daughters of God? When I can acquire, when I can acquire the eyes of Jesus, then I too begin to see those who have hurt me as my brothers and my sisters, so that I can share the abundance of God's forgiveness in my life with them. And that sets me free. And you want to be free, don't you? Yes! Let's pray that beautiful prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful gift of forgiveness in our lives. Take away my hard heart, my unforgiving heart, and give me the heart that loves and forgives because you have forgiven me first. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you. I worship you. I adore you. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'm pleased to offer my prayerful support and blessings for Shalom World Media and for all of those that support it, for all of those that, this, that work in this beautiful ministry of bringing Christ in, into our lives. So may the blessings of the All Holy Trinity be upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen.